Hello booktube and welcome back to my channel. I am Sarah. This is Aussie SFF. It is the 20th of December, which means it is the 20th day of Vlogmas. And today I'm actually going to be doing a little mini, literally mini review of the first book of IQ84. I actually just picked this book up. Um, I've had it on my shelf for a very long time and I've really wanted to read it. I've only read one Murakami book before and that is The Invisible Library, The Hidden Library, The Secret Library. Something about a library and it's like this big, it's tiny. Um, so I wanted to be able to actually read some Murakami. Um, I was surprised at how easy it was to read. It was super, super easy. It is dense, but the actual language used is like really easy for me. And it's got tiny, really thin paper, but if you can see, the lettering is actually a decent size, which is awesome for my dyslexia. So I wanted to do a little mini review at this point because I've read nothing about this book. Um, and I wanted to actually put down into onto tape um, what my thoughts were at this point. At this point, the first book I gave three and a half stars because I felt like there was a lot of setup involved in this one. Uh, obviously being the first 400 pages of a nearly 1300 page book. I really wanted to just get this, sort this out in my head before I moved on. And I also wanted to read some different books in between reading books one and two. Just a warning, this does contain spoilers. So please be aware, I've tried to keep it as unspoilery as possible, but um, this is me analyzing the book. It's probably best to have read the first book um, and then giggle at my theories as to what's gonna happen after this, if, especially if you've read the rest of the book. In the first book, it's from April to June of 1984 in Tokyo. And we're following the stories of, um, firstly, Aeon, I'm going to get this, I'm going to put an N in there, Aomame, uh, which is apparently green, Greenpeace, um, and she, we first come across her when she is in a traffic jam on the big freeway, not freeway, but like roadways um, in Tokyo running will we'll soon be running late for a very important meeting she cannot be late for this meeting that's all we find out about it she's very nicely dressed uh she's in stockings even and she needs to be at this meeting the driver uh almost jokingly but not suggests possibly going down the emergency stairway that comes off these high rise roadways but gives her this odd really strange sort of warning that nothing will look the same after you do something like this uh and it's almost sort of it feels like uh this will change you but really it's just walking down a set of stairs uh we then find out that she is actually a hired assassin um who assassinates men who commit domestic violence against their wives and the law has no repercussion to actually uh, get these men uh, and they will just continue to do it either to their wives or the next person that they're with. We slowly sort of learn things about her but she starts to notice things that she really should have been aware of before like the police officers' uniforms have changed and they're now carrying guns, which is, well, they're now carrying semi-automatic guns as opposed to Colts, I think. The oddest one that she notices is, when did there happen to be two moons in the sky? And there's other things that she's sort of picking up on, events that she really should have noticed had happened and really don't. Uh, one being the joint efforts between the US and Russia um, making a moon base, which is, yeah, I'd, I'm pretty sure I'd noticed that, um, especially in 1984. She starts to call it uh, 1Q84 and the Q is for 
question because she's not quite sure if she's in her own reality or that reality has changed around her. Every second chapter is Eo Mame. Other set of chapters is about Tengu. I think I'm saying that right, Tengu. He is an aspiring um, amateur writer who is a mathematical genius by all accounts from what we can tell and he has chosen to not work as a mathematician but work as a high school maths teacher hello uh high school maths teacher um but works at a cr I, i'm no maths genius um works at a cram school which seems to allow him more days of the week to do his writing so he is approached by his editor slash contact in the literary world komatsu and he has this plan where they found this submission for the new writers award that is this amazing story written by this 17 year old girl who goes by the name of uh Fukairi. The language is very stilted and it doesn't flow but the story is so captivating and so amazing that every single one, every single person who's read it reads it all the way through and possibly a couple of times. Komatsu convinces Tengo to meet with Fukairi, ask her if it's okay if he rewrites her story uh, and in the process of convincing her finds out that she is she's got this uh, sort of um, very odd past she meets the professor who um, has sort of adopted her after she ran away from a commune style farm where the professor's friend her father had built up this um, sort of collective commune style farm place that has turned a bit nasty and has to do with um, some events that have changed things in the policing world. She ran away seven years ago. The professor's daughter is the one who's actually typed out this story for her because as it turns out, Fuka Iri is, is actually dis very severely dyslexic. Uh, and I know where she's coming from with this one to the point where her writing is so bad there's no possible way she could have written it herself but she can talk it however when she does talk it's very short sentences with no inflection something is funny about that and then there's the whole idea that her story that she's spoken about the little people and this dead um, this goat that sh her negligence has caused its death and she gets trapped in a ha um, room with it when it's dead and the little people come out and she thinks it's real and some other people are starting to think that it's real as well. All of that, 400 and something pages, very complicated. Where I'm going from here, we then start getting sort of indicators of the, we're getting the brushes slightly of Tengu's life matching up with Ao Mame's life and how it's ever so slight. They do, they have at one point known each other and there's these, and it's sort of starting to come together that there's going to be some sort of meeting. That being said, I think this is my theory at the moment, and this is why I wanted to record this before I read any more. I actually think because Tengu gets inspired to start writing his own story and there's two moons in the sky in his story and that is my pretty much my one piece of information uh, that has made me go hang on a minute here I think Aomami's uh, story is actually Tengu writing it I don't think the person that he is writing about exists in this form in their world. So that is my theory at the moment. Please don't, please don't tell me in